What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video. Well last time we started placing all these good old refineries down here so we can make some heavy oil residue then the resin byproduct goes to make plastic and then the heavy oil residue goes to make petroleum coke I think. Yeah petroleum coke. I thought it was. And the reason we're making the petroleum coke is so it can go along these lines to feed the orange refineries on the left hand side because that's where the electrode scrap is going to get made. And the reason I say the electrode scrap is, is technically aluminium scrap, but the electrode scrap is an alternate recipe of the aluminium scrap. So we need 240 uh, alumina solution, we need 80 petroleum coke, and we're, that's going to output 400 aluminium scrap per minute with a byproduct of 140 water. And what we want to work on today is working on processing this water out of these machines into other machines so this will not back up. So my plan is, is to put the copper station down here, which we had before, but obviously in a different position. We're going to create an overpass that goes over here, which is going to bring in the copper trains. And the reason I want to do an overpass is because I don't want to keep the trains on the same level and which could, well start bottlenecking the trains basically due to traffic congestion then above these refineries i want to put down a platform where i'm going to be placing quite a few refineries for the uh, pure copper recipe so like i said we're going to add an overpass we're going to add a train station to bring the copper over from this location that we built quite a while back and what I've done is I've made sure that the, all the belts have been upgraded to 780 per minute to make sure that we can bring in a lot more than what we could because technically each of these lines are bringing in 600 and that is just due to the ores that they're kind of sitting on. They can't reach higher than 600. And the only reason that is is because one, we just don't have any more copper nodes in the vicinity to attach to them. So I'm leaving it at 600 and that's a good little number for what we're going to need because it's still going to be a lot more than we need. That then makes its way out of the station into these lifts right here and then heads upwards onto the flooring. And as you can tell, I've added an underflooring because we need to add the pipes in here and then also we've got quite a few copper lines to do. And then on the top floor is where we need to add the refineries, which are more than likely going to overclock because reasons. And then reasons B... If we put a refinery down and go to the pure copper ingots, we can see that 15 copper to 10 water is going to be 37.5. And each of the lines are going to be bringing in 600 copper ore per minute, which means if we're going to hear 600 divided by 15 is going to be 40 refineries. So we're going to overclock it to its, the intake 30 instead of 15. So we need 20 refineries in the line. Basically doing a line of 10 down there and a line of 10 down there with a obviously a manifold along the inside. Uh, but we also need to check the water. And if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be 20 water per each machine. So like the water is not going to be the problem because we need what 100 is the well, these refineries down here are doing 140 per minute, right? And we did the math last time. I just can't remember the number. I didn't even write it down. We have 12 refineries here, and these 12 refineries are all sending out 140 water. So 140 water times by 12 is going to be 1,680. And we need to consume 1,680 water, which I believe if we get all of this done, we should be able to do it with no additional water. Well, we might need additional water for the copper. So first plan of action is to lay down how many lines? Is it five? Uh, five lines of 600. So five lines of 20 in a horizontal direction that way. So I've just placed the first section down so you guys know what it's going to look like. And this is going to be basically one block. And then we just need to duplicate this four more times in that direction. All it's going to be, all it's going to, blah, 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 blah. all it's going to be, is ten refineries on the left, ten refineries on the right, all manifold into a Mark Five line um, on the output side, and then on the input side, we're just going to do one line uh, of three hundred going that way and three hundred going that way. And if we go underneath, uh, we can see that this uh, first six hundred line is being split here uh, into three hundred that way and three hundred over there. I've not done the pipes just yet, but that's what's going to be happening here and that means each of these lines as well of what 10 
is going to need 20 water. So 240 water per each line. 20, yeah, 20 times 10 is going to be 200 water, sorry, per each line. Maths. So that'd be one line of 600, one line, oh, sorry, one line of 600, one 200 line, 200 line. So every three lines of refinery is going to consume 600. So we're going to be doing five of this. So that'd be one, two, three. So three lines will cover two water, uh, two, 1,200 water. And then, yeah, we're easily making enough copper. We might need to actually bring in an additional water to cover the rest of the copper that may be needed. But I've also placed these beams down. Because uh, I do get some people asking that, like, how do you work out the layouts of your factory and stuff? And I usually place beams down like this just so I know where I'm going to be walking. Kind of give me a little guideline kind of thing and then i usually position like the, the the pillars and all that kind of good stuff um so now that we've done this we just now need to duplicate this five times i have kind of like you know semi daisy chained uh these up here and i've showed you how to do that in multiple videos and then once we've got all this done i then need to get it all up and running and make sure that the copper is uh you know going to be efficient uh otherwise because if all of this relies on the bauxite if the bauxite does not go into these uh, refineries here or is inefficient into these refineries um it won't make the sloppy alumina if the sloppy uh, alumina is not being made it's not going to make these electrodes scrap if the electrode scrap is being made too much and the water is not going anywhere it's going to backlog if the electrode scrap here does not receive the petroleum cork it's going to back up the heavy oil residue which means it'll back up the resin which means it'll back up the plastic which means it'll back up the oil so everything relies technically for every Everything to work here on the aluminium uh, sheets and the aluminium casings to be produced and that is going to be our end result i want to do today uh, and then once them get done we can make sure that we're sinking the copper just so we can see the efficiency of that and we've got to make sure we sink the copper sheets and the copper casings and then we can see everything running efficiently but the main thing we need to look at today as well is load balancing all of these scrap here because each of these scrap is sending out 400. So that's a 400, that's a 400, that's an 800, meaning that we need to merge two of these lines together, then overflow the rest to another line. Uh, and we're gonna do that in this space here, and then send it up onto a wall of electrode scrap uh, lifts, which will then go into some, ref uh, not refineries, some uh, either foundries or smelters. I'm not worked out which I'm gonna do yet to make the ingots for the aluminium. That was a bloody mouthful, I'm not gonna lie. So hopefully when I get it built later, you can visually see what I meant if you are a visual learner like me. Right, so three hours later, I've managed to get all the other uh, refineries down. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a tedious job, as you know, because one, you've got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, and a lot of stuff to place, and then it's a matter of placing the merges, then the belts, and I could have easily gone into and made a possible blueprint, Then, but then I'm not a big fan of blueprints, but I do have a blueprint video coming up soon, uh, which is highlighting some, well, a particular creator's blueprints, who's very kindly sent me all of them over, and uh, you're going to be in for a shock. So because we've got 12 refineries, it means we're going to need 12 smart splitters. So I'm going to put down, like, 12 going like say here and then we need to make sure there's a gap for a lift i think that might be enough room uh if we was to put down that there and then go into a mark one to leave this and then place you there is it's it's quite tight uh but it would work there's no moving objects um, and we do this all the way along here until we've got like 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Counting with bits. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then we've got to put down the floor holes just like this. And then put down our lifts. And some of you must be wondering, like, bits, you only need to do, like, 20. Why not merge two of the uh, 400 lines together and then output the uh, the splitters from one of the lines? So, for example, uh, put a smart splitter on this line and then overflow it that way. Um, 
and then merge these two lines together because then the excess that's going to be on this line will go down, right, which will be 20. The thing about that is you can't factor in which of these is going to be the primary line. So this might be the one that might constantly run through the merger where this one backs up, which means that smart splitter that we placed there would actually overflow the 20. But this one might be the uh, this one might be the primary line. So this one might constantly keep moving into the merger and this one then backs up. So then that pushes that way. You know what I mean? So it's ideal just to kind of put everything into a smart splitter like this. At least you know you're not going to have any problems and they will all back up. And now we just need to bring these along here. Take these like so and then make sure that inside of here we have our uh, scrap going forward so scrap going that way and then left is going to be overflow like so and then each of the second ones we're going to put down a merger so i'm going to get a merger to come towards me um like so and we're going to skip and then place skip place and so on and then we're going to get a mark four line straight from there into that merger just like this like that and then we're going to do the same that goes into this merger, which means whatever comes out of these mergers now will be exactly a 780 line. So if we put a Mark 5 down here, this will be a 780 line. This will be 780 and so on. Because the overflow, so this is sending 400 down here, sending 400 down there. Obviously, 400 can't meet here. Um, and because that'd be an 800 line then. So the additional 10 is going to go down that lift. 10 is going to go down that lift, um, which will make 780 to meet up in there and then we just need to grab these lifts underneath merge them together and then merge all the 20 lines that uh from each of these sections merge together to make a 120 line so it's a bit of a mouthful hopefully you guys understand that best thing to do is not look at the rest of them just look at this little section here smart splitter on one line smart splitter on the other line overflow here overflow there them two lifts merge underneath to make a 20 line then we rinse and repeat that all the way along so that'll be 20 20 20 20 20 and 20 merge them together 120 line easy peasy lemon squeezy so now i'm going to do that for all of these lines to create the load balancer right so we can kind of see now that all the scrap is now going into the smart splitters uh, and it kind of looks mesmerizing looking at it from this angle i'm not going to lie um and then we can we can see that it's all merging together in the 780 lines uh, I'm currently waiting for this to optimize itself, hence the reason you can see gaps on the 120 line. Technically, there should not be gaps on the 120 line. If there is, it's an indicator to me that there is an unoptimized line uh, or something on uh, the uh, scrap, the aluminum solution, bauxite, all that stuff downstairs. Um, right now, it, it is starting to clean up now, so we're just going to give this quite a, quite a bit. So during this time while this has been running uh, and why it's running is because now I've sent all the scrap upstairs, which then got into uh, the smelters, which are making the ingots. I've showed you this previously in the previous aluminium build before we did the rebuild. Uh, and I've just got them all going into the, uh, the smelters up here. Uh, so we can see if we go inside, 60 aluminium scrap is going to make 30 ingots. Uh, and each of these lines is 780. So 780 divided by 60 is going to be 13 machines. And as you can tell, we've got 13 machines all the way in a line. And we've done that all the way along here. And these are just making ingots. They're not making any form of sheets or casings yet. Uh, and that's all coming down here. But for me to get this moving as well, it does mean we need to boot up the copper. And just like I said before, we've got to put down sinks. And this is where, like I've done in multiple videos as well, it talks to you about just kind of like uh, getting all your machines sent towards a sink so you can kind of like stress test your whole factory uh, to make sure it is optimized and you can kind of see where problems persist. Because if you like to make sure that you're consuming, you know, 780 copper or i can't remember how much each, each of these lines are making um but uh, to make sure everything's running efficiently we can kind of look down these lines and make sure that we don't have any yellow lights red lights some machines are off all that kind of stuff and you don't want to go down and build your factory further and further and spend the next 10 hours building something only to find out you've miscalculated something uh, at this checkpoint so it's worth making a checkpoint here getting everything sunk including the aluminium stuff here uh, to make sure all these are running fine uh, and dandy. But also, uh, regarding the water situation, all of these copper machines have been um, have now received the water. Um, and that's all coming from downstairs, which is from these, because as you know, they're making a byproduct of water uh, of 140 per minute. So if we go down underneath, we can see here, I've got four lines of 140, 140, 140, and 140 merging together 
uh, into one line here. And then every four refineries, we're doing the same thing again. So in each line, there's going to be 560 water. And then the 560 water makes its way upstairs, which then makes its way into these up here, which then go vertical. I do have the pumps on the bottom, like I did state before, to optimize your water flow. You don't really want to put them on the bottom of a uh, vertical. You want to put them on the horizontal and then put them on the vertical. Uh, as you can see, I think I do have another pump somewhere else, but I think the floor and the head lift is pushing it up to the next uh, section here. And then if we go up here, what I'm doing now is because these pipes have got uh, 540 in, I've got another water line which comes up and actually splits itself this way. So we can see this water line here is sending uh, 40 water that way. Sorry, 560 is in each pipe. Uh, sending 40 water down this line into this pipe so it makes it a 600 and then the same down that way. So I'm using the valves to make sure that, you know, we're, we're making these lines at max capacity um so i've done that and then all that gets sent down here so one line of 600 goes into technically three lines like i said before 200 200 and 200 uh, and that goes up to uh these layers here so that's one uh one two three that's one mark two pipeline this is another mark two pipeline and then the other three over here other three lines is another mark two pipeline so three 600 lines that's 1800 water and as you know, we, we was producing 140 times by 12. Wait, 140 times by 12 is 1,680. And I'm just bringing in additional 120 water to make sure all of these machines can run efficient. So now back to the aluminium ingot situation. We can see each of these lines are 13 are coming down here. And in total, these are all making 780 ingots per minute. So we have 13... Mer input in 16 on the left and 13 input in 16 on the right which means that's going to be a 60 um well 30 plus 30 is going to be 60 merging there and so on and so forth so we have 26 machines 26 times by 30 is 780 uh which is a 780 line like i stated and then 780 line 780 line and then this right here is what is being consumed from the 120 um scrawled uh scrawled electrode <laughs> elect electrode scrap so this is the 120 line obviously it's still optimizing hence the gaps and this is going to go into here which is going to produce 60 60 which will then produce 60 um ingots that way um like i said that is currently being optimized and everything's kind of flowing downstairs we're just waiting for um just water to push through and then I'll, i can check on it in a few more hours so all of that's running into the sink and i can just leave this running now and obviously um like you can see here this line is got yellow lights which means you are not receiving enough water uh, so i need to keep an eye on this to make sure that is not going to be a case going forward and if there's four lines here that are needing water we do have a problem so i need to kind of figure what that out uh, what that is and if it's not happening on all of these we can see there's one there one there and it's just a matter of trying to optimize this now to make sure everything is fine because it might just be uh one the pipe bug where uh, if you place a pipe down uh, and attach it to an already existing pipe to another pipe uh, sometimes that pipe might not fill up it could be just a head lift issue it could be a, a me error so it's just a matter of optimizing hence why we put all these down so we can fix all of this before we do the next chapter of the build so then we know we're going to be optimized and then we can do that with the next part of the build is make sure that there's another checkpoint uh, and we're all good and fine and dandy so now what we need to look at is we have 780 ingots coming out of here and we need to merge them with some copper into a foundry which is going to make the not the foundry assemblers where's the assemblers assemblers here i don't know why i said a foundry uh i'll clad aluminium sheets so we're going to use just the standard recipe and we can see that we need 30 ingots for 10 copper ingots so the ratio that we're making here is we're going to have a lot of copper ingots, which is going to be left over. But don't worry. A lot of you are wondering, why are you making so much excess copper in the last video in the comments? And I responded like, I am going to use it for circuit boards. I'm going to use it for copy sheets. I'm going to use it for com computer builds, super computer builds and all that kind of stuff. So we do have a lot of excess, but this is not as much as what we're going to be making in the future when I 
totally take over the desert and make the titan builds that i normally build where i bring all the copper that i can into one central location mass produce the copper and then distribute that very much like we do with the water bottles to factories where needed uh, and we do that with the iron the concrete and we make steel as well last time i did them builds i was making over 48,000 iron ingots per minute it was pretty insane so if we've got 780 in each line that means we're going to need uh 780 divided by 30 we're gonna need 26 machines well 26 assemblers we could overclock all of these to 200 percent to make sure that's 13 uh assemblers and i think i'm gonna do that for each line um i think that might be what i do i think there's an auto save right now because i can't do anything i am literally locked out all right there we go i had a weird bug there wasn't an auto save because the smoke was still going in the background um, so now I'm going to do... How do I want to do this? Because obviously 13 is an odd number. I can't put 6 on one side, 6 on the other, and then I could just leave 1. Or I could just do a line of 13. I think I might do that because we're going to think about the spacing, right? If I was to put an assembler on that side and an assembler on that side, it means the assembler over here will not fit. Um, so I might have to do a line here, and then we'll do another line here, another line here. And we need to figure out what we want to do for the ratio-wise of how many casings we want over al al aluminum sheets, right? Because that's the aluminum, aluminum sheets. Uh, and then if we go to casings, they require 150 ingots per minute. So, yeah, I mean, requires a lot more copper as well. So if we... I need to figure out what I want to do. So I'm probably going to put that... Make that sheets... No, make this casings, make this casings, make that sheets... And then that 120 or oh, that 60 there as well make that into sheets as well because we're going to need more casings because of the alternate recipes i'm going to want to use possibly in the future but that's because i don't plan things i just kind of work things as i go hence the reason i'm so confused right now of what i want to do with this okay so as you can tell bada bing bada boom i made a bloody decision um the assemblers over here are the sheets so, like I said, I put 13 of these down, overclocked to 200%, which are taking in 60 aluminium ingots and 20 to make 60 alclad aluminium sheets. That's now being sunk in a resource sink, like I said before, because we want to stress test this to make sure all this is working uh, and keep things moving and doing its thing. These two lines, however, I put five assemblers down, intaking 150 ingots, 150, 300, 450, 600, 750 ingots per minute, but I have put down on the line here a smart splitter, which over um, sends any by uh, the, the the bloody overflow. <laughs> I can't even speak today. Sending out the overflow this way into the sink to sink anything. That's only temporary until I merge these together just because I want to, like I said, make sure all these are stress tested to make sure everything's working fine. And then I've just duplicated that here. So we do have two 780 lines being consumed by 10 assemblers altogether to make the casings. Uh, so technically, we should have an additional 30 here, additional 30 there, which I'm probably going to merge together with this line here to make this a 120 line and then use that uh, to make some more um aluminium sheets and then for the copper the copper lines we are currently using is just this line this line and this line well these lines here these are the only ones we're using and um, we can see one two three copper lines coming down here any additional copper that is being sent upstairs is being sunk as well so if they're not going into the uh lifts underneath like as, like i've got a smart splitter here um and the overflow is being sent along there as well and they're going into the sinks yes i will merge these at some point to make sure then we can then we can calculate what the overflow is to make sure we can utilize the 100 percent efficiency of that copper uh, and then down here we can see we have one two three four five six seven lines left of copper uh, i just want to quickly check if we've got a line of what is it 10 i'll put in uh, 75 that's 750 all your copper ingots per each line and i'm just going to kind of leave this running now because i've just had it shut off um so i need to make sure everything's running fine and bloody dandy so like i said this 
they need to keep running over there in them sinks and these need to keep running here because if we don't everything downstairs will backlog uh, because it's just a chain reaction um, so if the scrap doesn't work it stops making this you know the uh, the salumina won't be getting made the water won't get pushed through but it's also getting dark down here as well but in the next video i want to show you a little teaser of what i've kind of been working with because it is a decoration video for down here and uh, because it, it's getting a little dark and we need a little bit of light so yeah as you can probably tell this is the area that you saw last episode but this is what i'm going to show you in the next episode where we're going to kind of do some stuff like this to make sure that we are lighting up our factory below and we can kind of see all these good things and a lot of this stuff was made via blueprints and i will talk about that in the next episode uh, and all that kind of good stuff so thank you so much for watching uh, check out my other content right here and as always keep bloody smiling